Hello, New Hope. A privilege to be able to share with you again today. I have my star videographer here today. Say hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Yes, very good. I'd like to take a walk through Psalm 23. Would you come with me? I want us to uh, have this encounter with, well, a man who was a shepherd, but writes in this psalm from the perspective of a sheep. Before David was the king of Israel, and before he was a military hero, David was a young shepherd boy. And he speaks to God as his shepherd. The Lord, he says, not just a Lord or any Lord, but the Lord, the one and only Lord is my shepherd. In fact, David uses personal pronouns, I, me, my, 15 times in the psalm. So he lays hold of the claim that this is very intimate and very personal. He is a sheep in the Lord's flock. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in want. I will need nothing because I have everything when I have this shepherd. And he maketh me, in verse 2, to lie down and green pastors. Now, I'm sure you can go too far with that phrase, but it is an interesting one, particularly from the King James Version. He maketh me to lie down. One of my favorite preachers in days past was Charles Allen. Dr. Allen was the pastor of First Methodist in Houston, Texas, and at that time, it was one of the largest churches in our country. He was a young man, and he was working way too hard, taking on way too much, and his body broke down, and he ended up in the hospital, and a preacher friend of his came to see him in the hospital, and he was aware of the uh, overburdened young minister, and he said, Charles, I just have one thing to say to you. He maketh me to lie down. And Charles Allen concluded from that and adopted it as a life lesson. He said, sometimes God puts us on our backs in order to give us a chance to look up. Well, I think this world has been put on its back right now, and I hope it will look up and look to the good shepherd. He maketh me to lie down. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I like my marginal reference. It says tender grass, uh, showing the sensitivity of a loving and caring shepherd. He takes me to the best places. He leads me in the plush green pastures, and I'm satisfied. David goes on to say, he leadeth me beside the still waters. You see, the sheep is, uh, is afraid of moving water because they're such poor swimmers. And so the shepherd would come to a gentle, gentle stream and he would take some rocks and build a little dam there and make a little pool of quiet water for the sheep. The shepherd has that kind of sensitive care for his sheep. David goes on in verse three and says, he restoreth my soul. And quite often the sheep would follow the shepherd in line and throughout the day, a little sheep would leave the line and come over to the shepherd, and the shepherd would reach down and just rub the head and the ears of the sheep and whisper some shepherdly words of encouragement to the sheep, and he would get back in line restored. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through, and that is the pivotal word, the all-important word, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So David mentions two instruments that the shepherd would wield. The first one, he said, was a rod. And the rod was a, a heavy club. It was, about, it was about three feet long, two to three foot long. And uh, if, if the sheep was threatened by a lion 
or an invader, a bear, for example, that shepherd would hold that rod and he would use it if he had to, to protect the sheep. Thy rod, not sheep, walking throughout the day would look over and see that shepherd with that rod in his hand and he would be reassured. He also had a staff. The staff was sometimes up to eight foot long and it had a little crook on it. And that was very rocky terrain there and perhaps the sheep would fall over onto a ledge and the shepherd would come. He would come with his staff, that eight foot staff with a crook on the end of it and he would reach over the ledge and he would put the hook of, it, the, uh, of, of that staff underneath the sheep and pull the little sheep back to safety. So I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. No lack of enemies, and yet no need of fear. In fact, in the midst of my enemies, you are providing for me. You are nourishing me. My if thou anointest my head with oil. And at the end of the day, the little sheep would file into the fold and the shepherd would stand at the door of the fold and he would have his oil with him. And if he looked and saw a sheep uh, that had suffered any kind of injury because of a briar or a, a stone, he would anoint that injured sheep. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you remember Jesus saying, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus is the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want.